Fernanda and I talked about visualization today. And I think the beautiful thing about data visualization is that it can tell you answers to questions you didn't even know you had. Uh, one of the themes in our work is the multidisciplinary aspect of it that you know you can bring to bear design, art, sociology even, psycho psychoperception. And all of that ends up giving you a view of data that is holistic so that you don't have to go in with a particular question as often happens in statistical analysis, but instead you start to see the whole and you start to realize interesting things that you weren't even looking for. Visualization is a kind of way of investigating all sorts of questions. So one thing that we often do is we think about visualization as building a scientific instrument. So there will be a, some broad area, say Wikipedia or the collaboration dynamics on Wikipedia, and we'll essentially build a brand new microscope that helps us look at that data. And by looking at that data, then we'll discover interesting dynamics we hadn't seen before. And then we can apply sort of traditional scientific methods, you know, surveys, interviews, broad scale statistics on databases to confirm that what we saw really was happening. Often people who do visualization create visualizations from scratch, but that requires a lot of expertise and time. Very often people just need the right bar chart or line chart to look at their data from the right perspective and they'll get an important insight. Unfortunately, people are not all skilled at picking the right graph for their, their data or even knowing that they need to use a graph. And so our work with Google Sheets was designed to help people get the graph they need without them even knowing that they needed a graph. Something lights up, you click on it, and you get a dozen new views of your data. I think for me the digital transformation is simply making everything move much faster. So I think about when I first entered the field of visualization, I went to a library, a university library, I looked up these paper journals and flipped through old articles and read them looking sort of painstakingly for things I was interested in. And it took me a long time of reading these paper articles to get up to speed. Today. Um, for example, in machine learning, it's a, you know, the field is growing so quickly, every time someone has a result, they put up a paper on something called the archive. It's this global server everyone has access to. And you'll see literally dozens of papers a day come out. And it's become both this amazing way to keep up and to see what's happening, but it also means the field is moving really, really fast, that people can play off each other's ideas, improve each other's ideas. And I think I'm not the only one in the field who feels simultaneously grateful, but also perennially behind. Um, that it's, it's, the, it's wonderful that knowledge is moving so fast today, but it's also really, really hard to keep up. Google Scholar shows your citation data. And I think that's interesting from a vanity point of view. However, it's interesting from another point of view as well, which is that I'll go there, I'll see papers that cite my own papers, and they're really interesting. And they often are important ideas that in the past I would not have had access to for weeks or months, or maybe I never would have seen them. Now I see them as soon as they're indexed. And it's a great example of how the world is moving so much faster now, which is great on the one hand because we like intellectual speed, but on the other hand, it also, it's a real challenge. Uh, there's a lot to keep up with. Understanding the right role for machine learning in today's economy, that we know that the technology is extremely powerful and it's getting more powerful every year, and it can do a whole lot of good for the world. I think what companies need to figure out right now is what is the best way to deploy it? How do you best understand what it's doing? It's a new kind of engineering in my view that just as there was a big shift from hardware to software, I think the switch from software, traditional software engineering to machine learning, that's equally big and it's going to have equally profound repercussions. What does a machine learning system pick up from the world? Because we know it picks up on all sorts of subtle cues. In general, that's exactly what we want to happen. But sometimes the reality can be a little bit more complex. There are certainly are um, biases built into data sets, potentially. And to the extent that a machine is picking up on those biases, it's important that we understand them and we think about ways to sort of improve machine learning by removing biases, potentially, where they occur.